Seven reasons why God tests and tries us. I am not so sure. Each morning I ask God, Lord, what should I teach before we preach so that we can minister to your people? I felt this word possibly was relevant. I have so many messages that come in and compete for this lot in particular. And at times it's very difficult to find the right one. There is a scripture that I love the most. Psalm 11 verse 5. The Lord tests death the righteous. <laughs> you had thought it was Lucifer who tested the righteous. <laughs> Lucifer is in Dubai right now or Sudan or Mozambique mm, or in Harare. But <laughs> it is the Lord that tested the righteous. Now when I begin like this, don't think I love testing. I don't. No one does. But if you are to enlarge in life, right. tests are necessary. Hallelujah. There is nothing that can elevate you greater than tests. Oh when you go through a test, and literally you go through and never stop somewhere halfway, Amen. you will notice that God has a way of lifting you up. Whatever test you may be going through today, please understand it is the Lord that tested the righteous. As long as you are righteous, it is God that tests you. And he brings this test to work at our lives. Notice how Job puts it. Job never blamed the devil. This is what he said in Job 19 verse 21. The hand of God has touched me. <laughs> hey, Job 13, verse 15. Though God slay me, mm, yet I will trust him. Now with you, when you go through stuff, you want to sulk at God. You boycott reading his word. You boycott prayer. You boycott coming to church. You throw your hands in the air and say, where is God? He is around. He is the one allowing that test. God is a testing God. Now touch your neighbor's shoulder and say, now I understand why you are going through what you are going through. Even if you don't understand, just say, now I understand. And there are three words that we use in Debele. Touch their shoulder again and say, Cha na nyama zanayami. <laughs> Whatever you are going through, if you endure, I tell you, you are coming out. As you come out, even your mother-in-law is going to be shocked by the change that would have been effected by God in your life. Say, Amen. How many are ready for change here? So I want to give you seven things that are very necessary today when you are going through a test. Say amen. amen. Listen to First Peter 4 verse 12 before I go to those seven things. Peter tells us these words. Think it not. Say it with me. Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to test you as though something strange has happened to you. In other words, I would call it way. Whatever you are going through, saints of old have gone through that. Hey, Doc, I don't know what you are going through. Whatever you are going through now, there are many thousands ahead of you that have gone through what you have gone through. So please, don't disintegrate. Don't fall apart in the name of Jesus Christ. Say amen. God knows that after this test, you are untouchable. When you stand up, the anointing that will ooze out of you will surprise Lucifer and his demons because you are untouchable. Hey, if you have gone through death and if you have died to self, when you stand up, you have nothing to lose. Say amen. <laughs> Think it not strange. 
touch the lady called Rhoda next to you and say, Sister Rhoda, say, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to test you as though some strange thing has happened. It's only people that are looking at you that strange things have happened, but not God. God says, oh yeah, nothing surprises me. I knew you would go through that. I knew God will sustain you. Say amen. That's why we love champions that go through stuff and come out. Say amen. If you haven't gone through stuff, you have nothing to tell me anything about. But if you have gone through these trials here and you stand and say, Hey, I was falling apart, but God came to me and he sustained me. He is the lifter of my head. Hiya, ya, ya. Asazi basalwa. Asi bunandi be gospel le. Ungani ngama futa la matumbile mbeba la masse le chomoli ya kuakanzi ngana paga. Hey, whatever you are going through, God will sustain you. He is the one who started the work in you. He will bring it to completion. Oh, I am here to tell you, you are not dying in that storm. God will come and take you out of that storm. Even if it means he has to resurrect you. Uza pagami, sir. Hey, 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 hey. Think it not strange. <laughs> Peter understands this. Remember, he had denied Jesus. When he did, it felt like the whole world shut on him. Jesus, he had told him. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. I watched the movie about Jesus and Jesus turned around at the third moment and he looked at Peter. Sorrow hit him. It hit him hard. He said to his brethren, I'm going fishing. In other words, I'm leaving Christianity. I'm better off in my trade as a fisherman. <laughs> but when Jesus was going to the cross, he says, go and tell the brethren and Peter. <laughs> it's only human beings that abandon you when you are going through trials. Not God. God is ever closer to you. Loves you the way you are. Say amen. Lift both your hands and say hallelujah. Hey. Paul writes in 2 Timothy 3 verse 12. Ah, this is how he says it. Apostle Paul. All that they, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus may suffer. Does it say may suffer? Shall suffer persecution. So when you see someone going through stuff, don't feel pity for them. Know that God is making them and shaping them. Is it easy to go through a storm? No. I have gone through lots of them myself. Lots of them. But I know that if you are patient, you always come through. Amen. Weeping may endure for a night, says Psalm 35. <laughs> ah, but there's something that always comes in the morning. It's called joy. You notice the word is not happiness. Because happiness is circumstantial. But joy, even in a storm, you can have joy great joy. When things are falling apart, joy. When you have no money, joy. Hey, when your friends, joy. Lina my boyfriend, we are chia waka temba, siya wa agu chie. Kotu begu koni le batse gu Hey. But the lover of your soul will never leave you nor forsake you. 
Say amen. Hey. So he writes, All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Listen to Matthew 5, verse 10. Blessed are they who are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Take these principles down, please. They will help you just now. Number one, pressure reduces or rather produces enlargement. There is nothing that produces enlargement. Help me, uh, young man, please. Help me with the banner. Remember, our declaration that we are dealing with is the mega church. I see a mega church here that will shock you. But you must be able to realize the seasons of enlargement which I'm seeing here. The mega church and its benefits. Realize, thank you, pressure produces enlargement. There is nothing that will enlarge you better than pressure. Blessings can't even do this. Blessings, many people backslide in blessings. It is when you are sitting pretty that you pray less. It is when you are sitting pretty that really you have no fervency in your heart. But when you are in a storm, you will cry unto God. Psalm 4 verse 1. Thou hast enlarged me when I was under pressure. Touch your neighbor and say, are you under pressure? Be it financial pressure, material pressure. Ask them, are you under pressure? You don't see the enlargement that is taking place in your life. There is something hidden that you're not seeing. You never enlarge unless there's pressure. That's why God allows pressure in your life. Ask preachers. They know about pressure. When you are going through pressure, you know. You will wish that God will find another way of increasing us. But he doesn't. He allows pressure to increase you. How many of you are under pressure here? Yeah. Enlargement is coming through. If you don't fall apart. So whenever you are going through this, pressure will always produce enlargement in your life. Romans 8, 28 states it this way. It reads, God always works all things together for good for those that love him and are called according to his purpose, even in that pressurized environment. Number two, trials prove and humble us. Mm. Trials prove and humble us. One of the things that you should pray for as a child of God is that God gives you a heart of humility. Pray for this every day, especially when you are doing well. Pray that God gives you a humble heart. A heart that does not say you are great. A heart that says, Lord, I need more of you. It is this element called humility that draws the anointing in your life. Your neighbor is too proud. Mm. Touch their shoulder and say, I'm not prophesying, but hey, I think you are full of pride. I see the way you walk. Mm. Ah, look at them and say, I, see. I saw you. Say, say to them, I saw you when you were looking at yourself in the mirror this morning. You looked at yourself seven and a half times. Yeah. You thought, now I am about to step out. The woman of God. <laughs> yeah, you were trying to fit that eyelash there, but it wasn't balancing with the other one until it balanced. And you walked out. You say, Ta -ta Hey, where are the dudes at HQ? They must see me. <laughs> Even if they were looking behind you, you thought they were looking at you. They were looking at the other lady behind you, but you thought it was you. You said, you tossed your hair, which is not yours. You just did. You tossed it a little bit. You'd say, hey, you're looking at me. Look at how poisonous I am today. 
One of the great things that you and I need is the spirit of humility. I tell you, if you employ and allow God to work at you in this way, God will elevate you. It is trials that humble us. When a trial hits you, <laughs> I tell you, you forget who you are. It hits you right between the eyes and you know the storm has hit you. While others are saying, great, great, but you think, my God, will I ever survive this? How many have gone through a trial where you never thought you would come out? Is that you, Mama Mafir? I see you have gone through a trial and your husband is not. Mm. So how did you handle it when you went through a trial and the man was in a blessing period? He was supporting you, but he, from a different angle, enjoying himself. <laughs> because when you are going through a storm, it does not mean that others are going through the same storm. It's personalized. It's yours. God orders it for you specifically to deal with you. So what you are going through is yours uniquely. Yeah, God ordered it. He came in and said, this one is for that one. Can it come through? It can hit you while your spouse is next to you. While you are tossing in bed and your spouse is having angelic visitations. Uswelu butong, umuto pasu wako lapan. Eh, wata ka mnanda, afuke kuchela. Ni pupi ngilosi zisiza zipapa. Wenu zata nube pasu wako. May God be the lifter of your head. It is trials that humble us. Because by nature, we are easily puffed up. All of us, including this preacher. All of us, easily puffed up. If you buy a car, you think yeah, everybody else must see that you are driving a new car. After three years. makeup we pray that God will keep us down there. You will never, never be ahead of anybody who allows the spirit of humility to reign and rule over you. Say amen. Touch your neighbor and say, Make we are touch our hand. God wants to prove whether we love him or whether we save him for all the blessings he gives us. And that's why he will humble us. Ah, Deuteronomy 8, verses 15 to 16. Who led them, talking of the children of Israel, through that great and terrible wilderness? Why did he allow them to go through the terrible wilderness? Where there were fairy serpents and scorpions and drought, where there was no water, who brought the fourth water out of the rock of flint, who fed them in the wilderness with manna, which their fathers knew not, that he might humble thee. It is God who humbles us. <laughs> humble thee, and that he might Test thee to do thee good at the later end. So when God humbles you, he is wanting to do good at the later end. At times, it doesn't look like that. But when you are going through it, it doesn't really look like that. Number three, suffering in can increase God's power in us. 
I know what I'm talking about here doesn't sound spiritual. But it is spiritual. Suffering can increase God's power in us. So if you are asking for God's power, you must understand at times what is required. What is required is that. David says in Psalm 102 verse 23, watch the scripture. He says, he weakened my strength in the way. It was this way of elevation. I know nobody was elevated like David. Elevated in front of his family. Eight sons of Jesse, God selects him. As the king of Judah, God selects him. As king of Israel, God selects him. And he enlarges him. But he says, he weakened my strength. Why our strength? So that you and I will rely on his strength. Say amen. Because your strength will always make you boast. But when you are leaning on his strength, you know, were it not for God in this situation, I will be his strength. And therefore, you tend to rely more and more on God. And this man, the greatest warrior that I knew called David, understood. Second Corinthians 5, 10. It reads, Apostle Paul, I was given a thorn in the flesh. Every preacher has a thorn in the flesh. I have my many thorns in the flesh. Don't ask me which ones. Yeah. Just get away. Deal with yours alone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was given a thorn in the flesh. A messenger of, from Satan to hurt and bother me and prick my pride. Can you imagine? Apostle Paul is saying, it is God that, was, that allowed him to have a message of Satan. Say, I Satan, I won't punish you. I won't pat a pat. Is it God? Can God discuss with Satan over my life? Yes. It's scriptural. You found it in Job. God says, try him. <laughs> so he says, I was given a thorn in the flesh, a messenger from Satan. This is in your Bible. To what? To hate and bother me. So that means if God has allowed this dude for some time to play around with you, you will rebuke him and he won't leave. <laughs> to prick my pride three times Apostle Paul says I begged God to take it away each time he said my grace enablement is adequate for you in other words stay like that for a while there are issues that I want dealt with in your life so no matter what apostle epistle or vessel comes to pray for you, nothing will move when God says, Mpata pate. Ipata pata. <laughs> the things of God are very difficult. Hmm. So that means I can pour oil on your head and the messenger allowed by God in your life just stays. There are those that are allowed by the devil, they leave. But those are allowed by God because he wants to use them to perfect you to get to heaven, he just allows them. So you scream and fast 45 days and 90 days. The more you fast, the more they intensify because they have been assigned and allowed by God. Hey, it's like I'm speaking heresy. I know I'm really on the edge. I'm playing on the edge with scripture. There it is. <laughs> Three times I begged God to take it away. Each time he said, no. My grace is adequate for you. My power, strength shows up best in weak people. 
Last week is an appetizer we talked about. It is the lamb that take the prey. It is the weak that are always prevailing. There it is. When you are strong on your own, the power of God is not seen much. But when you are down there, that's why I want when you are prophesying to me, prophesy about money when I have no money. So that I will get it and remember. When I already have money, I don't need prophecy. I have it. Mm. When I'm low there, when I prophesy, I say, Am I prophesy? As long as you are here, you will see this. When we are late at church, 20 minutes late, say amen. Three times, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. Number four. Affliction separates the chosen from those that are called. Called, not C-O-L-D, but Ababi's way. C-A-L-L-E-D. Affliction separates the chosen from the called. Isaiah 48 verse 10 says, I have chosen thee in a furnace of affliction. That means when God is looking for his champions, he goes to the afflicted. <laughs> the afflicted. And he calls the afflicted. Ha! Kunzi Malok. He calls the afflicted because he understands they have a certain level of endurance. The afflicted, he chooses them in a furnace. There is a furnace of affliction. Hey. Asas Bazalwa. Number five. Persecution or suffering teaches obedience. Once you have gone through certain things in your life, you will know quickly to obey God. Storms of life are never easy. Never, never, never easy. Hebrews 5, verse 8. Though he were a son, though he were a son, yet lend he obedience by the things which he suffered. There are certain levels of obedience that you can only learn by through hardships. When you go through stuff, you know I will never want to go through that again. And therefore you obey. Though he were a son, yet he, talking of Jesus, he lent obedience by the things which he suffered. Whom the Lord loveth, the scripture says, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son. Let's read First Peter 1, 4, verse 1, 2, 15 and 19. We'll just pick a few here. For as much then as Christ had suffered for us in the flesh, Arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, same mind, same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Verse 2. 
that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. The next verse, please. Next verse. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Next verse. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Suffering will always produce obedience. Number six. Trials produce perseverance and maturity. If you want anything that will mature you fast, it is trials. Let me say clearly, I don't enjoy them. I'm preaching about them. I don't enjoy trials. Least to say, what type of a man is this one that enjoys hardships? Hmm. <laughs> but if God has to enlarge you, there is no other way. James 1, verse 2 and 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters. Whenever you face trials or diverse trials, of many kinds because you know say you know the testing of your faith develops perseverance when you have gone through stuff in your life you have this ingredient called perseverance nothing moves you not even one thing it produces perseverance perseverance therefore must finish its work so that you may be mature. In other words, this type produces a finished product. Hmm. It must finish its work so that you may be mature. That means you cannot be mature unless you've gone through stuff. If God blesses you quickly, that's why he delays. You are not mature. And that's why you will look at others that are down there and criticize them. Who are not doing well and criticize. But when you have gone through stuff yourself, you will want to lift others. Say amen. Perseverance must finish its work. So there is some work of perseverance that must be finished in our lives. So you can't speed up this process when you are going through stuff. Oh, please look at your neighbor again and say, whatever you are going through, be patient. It's soon to pass. I know it appears like you'll never come out there. Yeah. Especially when you are broke and praying for money. It doesn't want to come. It seems like it's far away from you. No matter what you do, even at night you wake up not to pray. It wakes you up. Your state of brokenness is the one that is waking you up around about 1 a.m. to say, remember you have no money. can't. Fiery ordeals do not produce instant results. So when you are going through that trial, eh, not easy. <laughs> Three causes of trials. Wow. Somebody pushed that. Three causes of trials. It's just a thing that fell. Here are the three causes of trials. A, Dealings of God. When you are going through a trial, it is God dealing with you. Did someone faint there? They fainted. Okay. Dealings of God. If it is to submit to God and go through the trial victoriously, he has 
to deal with you and deal with me. The dealings of God. Be self-induced. There are hardships that we bring upon ourselves. Not God. There are others that are brought by God directly. But there are others that are self-induced. What do you do? Learn from it and be wiser next time around. See an attack from Satan. So before you say Satan, just find out whether they fall in any one of these categories. We said number one, God's dealings, A. B, self-induced. C, an attack from Satan. So if it's an attack from Satan, fight him. Resist him. But if it's from God, no matter what you do, you will have to go through it until the process is manifested. Let me see whether you understood these three A, B, and C. Persecutions, hardships come from three sources. Number one, dealings of God. Number one, no, number one still. Yeah, let's stay with that. Number one. Number one. Yeah, you cannot pray for that person, for those dealings to move when they are from God. Mm, just leave them alone. Yeah. They will not move. It will be a religious prayer. It won't work. Mm. But if it's self-induced, be be please they must learn from it and get wiser you can pray for them if it's C surely you can stand and pray for them James 4 verse 7 says resist the devil and he will flee can I give you the last one number 7 troubles test our faith in God's word troubles, they always test our faith in God's word. Are you going through any troubles today? It is God trying to prove his word in your life. Psalm 12 verse 6 it reads the words of the Lord are pure, purified, words as silver, tried so the word of God in you will be tried in a furnace of earth, purified how many times? Seven times. Seven times. Psalm 105, verse 19. Talking of the man, young man called Joseph. This is what the book of Psalms says about Joseph. Until the time that his, Joseph's word came, the word of the Lord tried him. He tried him while he was in Canaan when his brothers persecuted him. He tried him in Potiphar's house. He tried him in prison. And it is the same trials that elevated him to stand before Pharaoh. Wouldn't you like to hear these words? I am Pharaoh. And nothing, nothing, nothing will be ahead of you except on the matters of the kingdom. You come second. What words? But Joseph, if Joseph had arrived there earlier, 14 years earlier, Joseph would have been a problem. Because Joseph was a problem when he told his brothers, I dreamt of you bowing down. I think he had an attitude. Mm. He had an attitude. Because when you are young, you have an attitude. I told you when I asked God about this place, I said, Lord, why did you allow me to build this beautiful place here? He said, you were not number one. You were number 11. There were other better men than you that would have built this. But some of them left the city. Some of them left the country. So when I looked around, I found you there, number 11. I tried you. Mm, you were number 11. And sometimes when you look at yourself, you think you are a wonder, a wonder woman. 
Do you remember the Wonder Woman? In those magazines? Hey, touch, your, touch the lady next to their shoulder and say, Hello, Wonder Woman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he said, you were not my initial person here. All others left. You stayed. And therefore, I had to put you there. Mm. Ah, that shakes you. And it tells you, before God, you are not indispensable. Yeah. Uh, so if he has an assignment... And you just move, you will put someone who does better, but he will let you know that it was you who was supposed to be in that place. But you missed it. Mm. Others left. I got to understand a few names of, of one to ten. I don't know all of them, but I know a few of them that could have been. I got to understand by my heart, as I said, who could have been names just jumped. Not many. There were four or five that I understand. I think when I meet them, I've met one and shook their hands. I knew from the shaking of hand that they understood. I know of one who had been given a prof prophetic word concerning something like this. A clear word. So when I pay God will put someone better. Hmm. What a shocking thing. Hey. I got so afraid that day and I said, Lord, what is this that we are all involved in? You mean we are not great? You might you know, asking God, Lord, so I'm not really that great. No. You're not. Play there, sense the anointing here. Touch it louder, please, if you can. In other words, you and I are not great. I felt religious when I asked God this. I wanted to hear him say, oh, because of the way you pray. <laughs> I chose you, yeah. yeah. Oh no. In other words, if you are to simplify it, shut up. You are just number 11. Don't ask this silly question. So there is nothing that keeps you humble. For Joseph, if premiership was going to come to him while in Canaan, from Canaan, threat to be number two to Pharaoh. Watch his attitude. He had said to his brothers, I saw you guys bowing down. Joseph had no grace with his words. Can you imagine approaching someone to say, I will be greater than you. You watch me. You are there. You haven't seen. I know you are older in years than me, but watch me. You, you will bow down. As if that was not enough, he went to mama and said, mom, mom, you have beaten me several times and papa, but watch, you will bow down to me. How many of us do that? It may not necessarily be on matters of the throne, but with your attitude. Uzambonu bishop. Mtanangeba mbi microphone ya kenyeko. Ha, nzanyagaza. Uzanyagaza. Mena utala nanyagaza. Maybe you are here, you want to show someone. Maybe it's a spouse. that left you. Maybe it's a boss that you were working for in an industry. I'll show the boss. Maybe it's a boyfriend. 
<laughs> but I terminated the relationship. You want to show the boyfriend that you can get someone better. And you go and pick a kangashe. You know what a kangashe is? Outside. The kangashe looks better than the dude. Previous one. Give you a hard time. You will wish you hadn't fallen in love. There are many people that wish they had never fallen in love. The pain of loving someone who is wrong and you are staying with them. You have 27 and a half kids with them. You wish you could move. But societal norms re reject you, refuse that you move. There's a lot that has gone through. You can't move. <laughs> Joseph. Uh, I don't know what he thought. In the pit, did you actually call me? You just told me that I will be great by two witnesses. First dream and the second dream. Now I'm in the pit. Hi. Then I'm taken from the pit as Joseph. I am now sold as a slave boy to the Ishmaelites, traders. Traders that put a dollar value on me and sell me. They take me down from down the pit down to Egypt. Down there they sell me again to a man called Potiphar who had a lady called Mrs. Potiphar. I'm elevated a little bit just to breathe until Mrs. Potiphar says lie with me. I know you think Mrs. Potiphar was a loose woman. She wasn't. She just wanted the vision. She was part of the trying. God allowed, not God gave, but allowed that situation for Joseph to go even down. How down can you be? Down in the pit? Down in Egypt? Down in prison? Even in Asha, even in prison, when the anointing is on him, he interprets a dream. Somebody says, I will remember you. When they come out, God would have told them, <laughs> The pain. someone who was supposed to help you and they didn't help you. You are languishing yet your gift helped them. Languishing in prison. You will wish they would remember you and just tell Pharaoh somebody of means. Pharaoh there is a man there. There is a man. There is a man. They forgot you. It is at the right time after 10 or 12 years, some scholars say 14 years, right then, the timing of God. When God says your season of hardships, I can I preach about the season of hardships at their end. When your seasons of hardships have come to an end, no gangster will ever stand away. way. No sorrow will ever put you down. Because this is an ordained time from God. When he says now, <laughs> it will seem like even demons salute you and say, it is his time now. Everybody creates a soft passage for you. Even in prison, they say, come out, Joseph. Come out, come out, come out, come out, Joseph. Take a bath. 
and chef you are about to stand next to the very important man in the whole world equated to the president of America today you are standing before you, so you must shave change your garments Joseph you have been wearing wrong garments it's time to change sorrow has been upon you that sorrow is lifting up <laughs> I want you to imagine Joseph on that day in prison he had been influential and he's telling them I am going out I am going out where are you going out to meet the man which man are you talking about? I will be standing today before Pharaoh. Why, Joseph? I had a gift, but God suppressed it. I had a gift, but he allowed me to go through stuff. He suppressed my gift for a season. I went through a lot, but today I'm standing. Hey, some of you, <laughs> don't throw your hands in the air. You are about to stand next to somebody or something that will make a difference. You will look back and say, now I know, now I know, now I know, now I know. And when you stand this time, the anointing that will be upon your life will overshadow the pain that you have gone through. Stand up, please, if you can. <laughs> hey! When you are going through stuff, your friends leave you. Everybody leaves you. Don't worry about it. Be wise. It is those that stand with you when you are in a trial that you must keep his covenant friends don't leave them those that come when you are up there you don't need them you need those that identified what you are going through and lifted you up those are changed. what are you going through sister Rhoda today or oh, sister patience mm. or oh, sister deny Ask you to come forward if this word is for you quickly. Don't waste time, please. Walk, 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 walk. Tell your neighbor, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Ay, ay, ay. We've been made sure for a night. What you are going through is but for a season. I stand to prophesy over your life. I see elevation in your life. Please don't throw in the towel. Don't think God has forgotten you. He hasn't forgotten you. He knows you by name. Why do calamities fall on Christians? He just wants to perfect you. Because if you arrive at the throne of Pharaoh early, it will be disastrous for you. You will let the balance that's needed. I see many of you are crying here. He will wipe away your tears. It is Him that will wipe away your tears. Yeah. 